Hello, this is Melissa Cole, curator of the Oshawa Community Museum. I would like to thank you for joining me today for our monthly podcast series. This month's podcast features a collection of artifacts from our Farewell Cemetery collection, which are currently featured in the museum's current exhibition, Morning After the Victorian Celebration of Death. This exhibit explores 19th 19th and early 20th century death and funeral customs by drawing on museum and private collections through mourning dress, death and memorial photography, tombstone motifs, hair work, and other mementos of the funeral ceremony. Featured in this exhibit is a unique collection of coffin jewelry that was acquired by the OCM after the archaeological examination of Farewell Cemetery in 1992. The Farewell Cemetery is located on the southeast corner of Harmony Road and King Street in Oshawa. Mr. Moody Farewell donated this land to be used as a burial ground for the Farewell family and their relatives. The cemetery was in use from approximately 1827 until 1937. So why did this archaeological examination take place? The excavation of a graveyard is not done merely as a historical investigation, but out of necessity. In 1992, when the regional municipality of Durham proposed to expand Harmony Road, it was suspected at that time that there were unauthorized burials located outside of the Farewell Cemetery's boundaries. The following information I'm about to share is from the Commissioner's Report from September 22, 1992, that was given to the Works Committee of the Regional Municipality of Durham. Quote, Pre-engineering studies undertaken in preparation for the proposed reconstruction of Harmony Road, also known as Regional Road Number 33, between Blur Street and King Street have revealed that approximately 36 graves within the Farewell Pioneer Cemetery are presently outside the boundary of this cemetery and are encroaching on the right-of-way allowance of this dedicated thoroughfare. In order to align Harmony, Harmony Road for the proposed widening from two to four lanes, it is necessary to reclaim the regional road allowance." Unquote. Once the necessity for an archaeological excavation had been proven, it was imperative that all aspects of this project be handled in a professional and accountable manner. This is, not, this is done not only out of respect for the individuals buried there, but also because of the wealth of information that proper excavation and artifact care can produce. A wide variety of professionals became involved in the project, and the staff from the Oshawa Community Museum were willing witnesses to every step. Specifically, trained archaeologists were selected for the excavation. Archaeological Services Incorporated was contracted by the region of Durham to assess the impact and complete the mitigation of Farewell Cemetery. Archaeologist Chris Dudar, who directed the excavation, was given the title Project Osteologist. An osteologist is a bone expert who is able to discern sex, age, and some diseases from skeletal remains. Each grave was excavated individually and sketches and notes were made as they worked. After the excavation was completed, the remains were reinterred in a spot within the cemetery confines. Personal items found with the graves were reburied and coffin hardware was removed for analysis. The coffin hardware was studied by the archaeologist and found valuable in a comparison study of similar sites found in Ontario. A chronology of coffin hardware had been assembled and was used to date the burials. The chronology that they used indicates style types and when various decorations appear. According to Woodley, rectangular coffins replaced hexagonal coffins sometime after 1850. And during this time, coffins began to include more hardware items beginning with the two forms of plaques or nameplates. Swing bale handles were appearing around 1860, and white metal, coffin white metal coffin screws were introduced from 1860 and onward. Decorative tin studs were also appearing from approximately 1870 and onward. Viewing windows and short bar handles don't appear until approximately 1878. Paul Ferris of the Humber College Funerary Program informed ASI that the term undertaker evolved in reference to cabinet makers who also made coffins when they were required. The coffins were usually unadorned and from the middle of the 19th century coffin decoration became much more elaborate and family members could then create a unique coffin for their loved one. The Oshawa Community Museum was fortunate to receive this collection after the archaeologists had completed their study and report. 
Examples of the name plates, swing bail handles, the tin studs, and viewing windows are currently on display in our exhibition Morning After, which can be viewed until the end of, de- of November in 2015. Thank you for joining me for this month's podcast.